Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church, located where Federal Hill and the Inner Harbor meet in the heart of Baltimore. As a uniquely metropolitan congregation, the people of Christ Lutheran Church are called to proclaim the gospel, serve others, and invite all to experience God's love and saving grace. On a cold and snowy December day in 1887, over 260 worshipers were present for the first services of Christ Church, held in a rented hall in South Baltimore. From the start, many came from what was, for then, the most remote suburbs. It was an English-speaking Lutheran church, surrounded by several German-speaking ones, and there would be no pew rent, as was the custom at the time. Seats would be free and welcome to all. The congregation grew quickly under the dynamic leadership of a young, newly ordained pastor, Leander M. Zimmerman. Its current location was purchased in 1888 from another congregation that sold the building because, in their words, there is no future here. But the people of Christ Church saw a great future at the location. Today, those attending worship come from the entire metropolitan Baltimore area some as close as Federal Hill, and others as far away as Severna Park, Owings Mills, and Perry Hall. We live in Owings Mills, Maryland, about 40 minutes away. But I think one of the reasons why I continue to come here is the footprint that the church has in the community. Um, the shelter, the outreach to the neighbors, it's the beauty of the place. It's from the moment you walk into the door and you are greeted warmly by members, it is, of course, the music, the organ, the soloist, the sermons that, to me, just stay with me for the entire week after I leave. It made the worship experience so enjoyable that we never even gave a thought to the distance that we had to travel. Eloquent preaching of the gospel was always an important part of Christ Church. Several pastors over the years were well known for their preaching skill and high level of pastoral care. By 1925, Christ Church had grown to 2,000 members, was the largest Lutheran church in the city, and known as the church you can't forget. But the church building purchased in the late 1880s was no longer adequate to the task. So, to accommodate its growing membership, the parish hall was built in the mid-1930s with funds raised during the Depression. It includes a beautiful children's chapel and a fellowship hall that are still used today. In the 1930s and 40s, the adult choir was enlarged and junior, intermediate, high school, and young adult choirs were formed. Today, there are a variety of opportunities to worship each week. Worshiping God through music is enhanced through a world-class Andover organ and talented musicians. People tend to find their comfort spot in church. They pick a pew and that becomes where they sit weekly. And my choice of seats is right here in the choir for 44 years. It's been a wonderful experience. I've had wonderful directors. Paul Davis and Daniel Alney have been um, spiritual leaders as well as musical leaders. We've done great music. We follow the lectionary. Uh, it's just very meaningful to be part of a service here. And what a way to serve the congregation, uh, to be up here in this choir seat for all those years. But we are getting way ahead of our story. We need to go back to one of the major decision points in the history of the congregation that took place in the 1950s. The original 100-year-old non-air-conditioned church was becoming increasingly inadequate and unsafe. The question became, should Christ Church stay downtown or should the congregation move to the more affluent and attractive suburbs as several other inner city churches had done and where many members lived? Christ Church's third pastor, Dr. John L. Deaton, was adamant about remaining in South Baltimore. He wrote, let no one say our location is not good the unique thing about our church, and that which makes it the talk of the city and the whole church, is that we maintain our strength and give such an effective witness in this location. 
members rallied around the cause, and the beautiful edifice we worship in today was dedicated in 1958. Completed at a total cost of about 11 million in today's dollars, it was the only new religious building built in Baltimore's inner city for over 50 years. I'm a lifelong member of Christ Church, and each time I walk into the sanctuary, I'm taken back by its size and beauty with lovely wooden pews and high vaulted ceilings. The stone floor is similar to those found in cathedrals around the world. The elegant stained glass windows are particularly beautiful on Sunday morning in the early day sun. The altar and chancel are just magnificent with the backdrop of a large stained glass window. It's so inspiring and so conducive to worship. From its founding, the church had always made generous donations to national and worldwide mission projects. But beginning in the mid-1960s, the congregation gradually became involved in a wider range of face-to-face -face social ministry programs, opening its doors to the immediate surrounding community. The biggest thrust up to that time came under Dr. Carl Falkenberg's pastorate. Using seed money raised by Christchurch members, the 220-bed John L. Deaton Hospital and Medical Center opened, focusing on services to the chronically ill. A few years later, the Christchurch Harbor Apartments for low and moderate income senior citizens opened, along with a beautiful plaza and an underground garage. The Christchurch Complex was the first project completed in what was to become Baltimore's nationally renowned Inner Harbor Redevelopment. And most importantly, it was the only component designed to serve people in need. Living at Christ Church Hub Apartment has truly been a blessing to me. The people are so friendly and they treat you with such compassion and love and respect. It's a joy living at Christ Church Hub Apartments. But after moving to the apartments, I say, why should I travel around the world going to church when I have a beautiful open door church right across the plaza from me? And it keeps me smiling to know that I belong to such a wonderful church. Beginning in the 1980s, under Pastor John Sabatelli's leadership, direct services to others took on dynamic new directions. A daily nursery school was established, and tutoring programs started at neighboring elementary schools. The ministry of word and sacrament was enhanced through the weekly celebration of the Holy Communion and the start of a contemporary service on Sunday and a midweek candlelight service. When I was looking for a church that had a wonderful Sunday school program and had a welcoming service with contemporary music, this was the place I thought of. So we came down and we really felt part of something. A lot of the families who participated in the contemporary service came from diverse backgrounds and had interesting combinations of people. So we weren't the only ones who maybe looked a little bit different or had come together in a different way. So it was very welcoming and that was really the thing, being part of that community, being able to sing music that meant something to me, um, and also being able to be part of a Lutheran community, which is what I grew up with. Opening a temporary shelter for homeless men in the church's lower hall led over time to another major commitment to direct social ministry, the establishment in 2002 of the nonprofit Baltimore Outreach Services. This ministry provides emergency shelter, food, clothing, and housing to homeless women and their children who live in the church undercroft for several months until they have found suitable housing. Since the opening of the shelter, the church facility has been used 24-7, 365, with about 250 women and children served in a typical year. BOSS is a, a central part of homeless care for women and children in Baltimore City. And they are the most vulnerable of our society and also the most difficult to care for. They have so many roles. They ha there are so many demands on them, and yet they aren't always treated fairly or equitably as other people of our society are. And we really are working to end homelessness for the families that come to our shelter. The ministry of Christ Church's first female senior pastor, Susan Chernahoy, included outreach to the surrounding community through neighborhood walks 
and canvassing to almost 1,000 homes. Needed repairs were made to the building, including reconditioning stained glass windows that are now sparkling with light and brilliant with color, ready to greet worshipers for decades. And new programs were started, such as the Seven Ministry, in which lay congregation members are trained to help those experiencing difficult times in their lives, such as grief, divorce, job loss, and chronic illness. I didn't choose it, God chose it. And I feel really good about the fact that I can help somebody get some kind of help because in my lifetime, someone has always stepped in to help me when I needed it. So I feel like this is my calling. A Swahili speaking congregation took shape within the building because of outreach by an evangelist and his family whom Christ Church had helped resettle from Africa just a few years before. The construction of a new website, an upgraded sound system, and live streaming capabilities permitted worship to continue throughout the COVID pandemic. So the range of worship, ministry, and faith formation opportunities at Christ Lutheran has allowed me to enjoy my faith and grow in my walk with God in ways that personally resonate with me. I've particularly enjoyed the beauty of the sanctuary and the children's chapel, the, the midweek services, the holy week services, um, the Habitat for Humanity, build trips to El Salvador, um, the various adult Bible study discussions, and helping to prepare a home for one of our shelter residents and her family as they move into their new home. You know, part of that faith formation journey is being part of that larger community, part of God's church, and how do we tend to and care for each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Christ Lutheran's ministry continues to be one of welcome and hospitality, grounded in Christ's wide love, love that has emanated from Christ Church for over 134 years and will continue as long as God's people come together in this place. It has been said that the greatness of Christ Church is its amazing ability to hold on to its rich and glorious traditions and history. At the same time, it is open to change and the future. Christ Church has always been a leader. When others ran from the city, we stayed. When others closed their doors, we made a home for Meals on Wheels, opened a soup kitchen, and 20 years ago, opened a homeless shelter that has served over 5,000 women. In all these things, to God alone belongs the glory. I am so grateful for the compassion and my walk with God in this house of His called Christ Church. As Christ Church continues well into its second century of service, under senior pastor, Dr. Amsalu Galata. It rededicates itself to be good and faithful stewards of the gifts that have been entrusted to it and to go from strength to strength in the Lord's service.